Ollie, um, welcome to the show. It, I guess the emotions must have ran wild after the game against Collingwood. You mentioned in the press afterwards you were embarrassed with your last quarter, but disappointment, you would have been frustrated. How best would you sum up the situation? Yeah, good afternoon, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, look, it's probably been a, a similar trend to our last six weeks, to be honest. We've been... Uh, we've showed we're good enough to be in games, but um, for whatever reason, we don't have that scoring power. And when the momentum turned against us in that last quarter, um, we probably tried to take the game on a little bit, but those errors straight up led to more goals, which just piled on the pressure and um, we weren't able to get back into it. Yeah, and, and look, you mentioned a couple of weeks before, the losses and the way they happened against Adelaide and then against West Coast, that must have been emotionally draining as well for you. Yeah, certainly. We're probably a kick away from winning those two games and uh, footy's a funny thing. If perhaps you win those, you get a bit more momentum. But, um, look, we had no excuses on the weekend. We had everything to play for. Um, Finals were in our own hands. We win our last two games. We're still in the eight. So um, we had that to play for. And in that last, we, we weren't able to convert it to... Um, score on the scoreboard and um, leading to the game winner. Bloomin' footy, Ollie. We talked about it as you walked in. Um, it's the greatest game on earth. When you win, it's the greatest feeling. The connection with players and your club and your fans and the jumper and your winner is just nothing better than when you don't. It's just crap. <laughs> so is there is there anger? Well, it, it, what's the overwhelming, overarching emotion of the players? You're one of the leaders. Yeah, a lot of frustration, I guess. Frustration. Um, More than anger. Frustration. Oh, no doubt. Um, yep. As you guys understand how much goes into a football mm. season, um, mm. it starts back in November and the amount of effort you put in on the track and we think we've got a, a really good game plan and system that, that can win us games of footy um, in September and uh, to see it not all gelling together at this stage and not being able to get those wins to get us in to the top eight at this stage is... is um, mm. A bit demoralising, and, yeah, it's probably the, the word to put to it is frustrating. Yep. We had Lady on earlier, well, actually yesterday. He said the team just hasn't gelled as a team. Would you agree? Yeah, certainly. I think um, in lines where we're on the same page, but throughout the team, from defence to midfield to forwards, and you've probably noticed that a little bit in our scoring power. Um, at times, probably... First quarter on the weekend, the first quarter against West Coast where we kick five goals, four goals on the weekend yep. in those first quarters. We're all on the same page. The footy's flying. Uh, we know, I guess, what the next person's going to do and uh, we're not able to do that for four quarters, uh, whether mm. that's not being together long enough, um, not knowing each other as individuals. But um, I think that's where you see the, the Richmonds and um, GWS, Collingwood, uh, they're all on the same page and they know what each other do, are doing. Every time we've had you guys in, we've had Bokey a lot, we've spoken to you, you're a tight group. So off the field, you are a tight group. You have that connection. Bulldogs had it in 2016, Richmond last year, they have it now. Collingwood seem to have found it. I don't know that connection, that the fanatical love and passion to play for the jumper for each other, to for you to run 150 metres to tackle a bloke, then he does it for you. And why oh, isn't it there when you're such a close group, Ollie? I, 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 <laughs> Australian. Oh, it is. You know it I'm, is. Yeah. And that's that's what we're looking um, for at this stage. Uh, why can't we do it for each other? Uh, yeah. I don't think it's a. Uh, necessary a fitness thing. Um, every team, I get get gets trained up during preseason to be as fit as they can. So um, I don't think that's that's a reason. But uh, we're doing a lot of searching at the moment, and we've got to get it right for Friday night. Yeah. So do you think it's just when there's a turnover, you go blooming hell, or you know, Morty punches a bloke. I mean, that was a soft fifty, but from that moment on, they kicked eight goals. The resilience, the grit, the fight. The it, do you just do it too much? You ask, yeah, blooming hell. Yeah, results would probably say um, yeah. that's a bit of a trend of our game at the moment. We drop our heads when things aren't going our way and uh, we've got to understand that against good teams, you're not always going to have it your way. So you're going to have to fight yeah. it a little bit than you'd probably like to and um, we haven't been able to do that. Mm. Well, the thing that surprised me is the contested possession because that is a strength. Blokes like yourself and Tom Rockliffe and Ebert and Boker, they've got big bodies and you win the footy, but the last month it's just deserted you. You've, you've lost by an average of 25 in your last four losses. How do you explain that? Because that really has been a strength, particularly the first half of the year. Yeah, definitely. And I guess if you look at 
that run of form um, previous to this um, six weeks that have just passed. That was what was winning us the mm. game. So we were winning that contested possession. Uh, we were able to get it out to the runners and go. And um, for whatever reason, it, over the last four weeks um, particularly, we, we haven't got it done. And that's leading to uh, losing the games. And don't get me wrong, that's not just clearance. That's around the ground, mm. um, contested marks, loose ball gets. Um Sort of that out number at contest is is really uh, uh, yeah cost us because it feeds in and particularly your centre bounce hasn't been great either. You end up going, they win it. You go deep into your own defence, then you've got to come all the way back through. Yeah, it's so you're always against the eight, mm. uh, behind the eight ball. Yeah, Essendon home Friday night. We have five double A locker room doubles, eight double two three double O double O. Ollie wines in here for Pure Tap. We love their support. Win Friday night, you're in the eight. Yep. For 14 hours. <laughs> 14, nah. Potentially. That's all you've got to do. So, it, yeah, it's as simple as that in oh. some respects, but it's not as simple as that, is it? Not at all. Um, look, and we understand we've got a game to go here and we still have an opportunity, uh, however ever small it may mm. be. It's it's an opportunity to play final, so yep. we've got to do everything in our power to get right for Friday. Yes, and there are team in good form and they're going to come over here wanting to finish their year off well so uh, we have to win and then I guess hope for a little bit of luck on Saturday but uh, I come guess on, as long as there's a, well, you don't have to do too far right. if you look last year Melbourne no one thought they'd lose to Collingwood nobody thought that West Coast would beat the top side yeah. in Adelaide and then that's flipped around and of course West Coast made the finals Big, and we're had telling Ollie there's a chance <laughs> plenty of people wanting to have their say we're going to start with uh, Sean at Strath Albert and you're talking to Ollie Wines how are you? Um, you were talking about how the lines don't work together. I was wondering if you happen to become captain, how you would in, improve that or what you would do to make that happen less. Yeah, good question, Sean. Um, look, I think this type of thing happens with time. Uh, obviously, we had a, a quite a large list turnover at the end of last year. We had a 11 or 12 guys come to the team and I think these things take a little bit of time. Uh, we do as much as we can linking the lines during training to, to try to get our connection either from back 50 to mid or mid going inside 50 to improve that efficiency but I guess it just takes time so um, uh, over a pre-season or um, try to identify times we're allowed during the week to, to work on that relationship. Um, sim- as, things as simple as perhaps knowing how Ford likes being kicked to, if he likes it on his head, if he likes it to his advantage. Um, little things like that, I think, can help. Thanks for that, Sean. Let's go to Valley View. G'day, Damien. How are you going, Ollie? Good, Damien. Hey, um, first of all, you're going to win Friday night. That's a given, 60 points, whatever. But come Saturday, do you guys get together? Do you go into Charlie Dixon's, the back of his wardrobe, pull out the Gold Coast scarf and hat? And <laughs> Kate Corns be on the phone? Right, to cool. Give the pep talk. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> Great call. Um, yeah, my, I don't know if Dicko's got any Gold Coast jerseys lying around still, but um, <laughs> if we yeah can get the win, I dare say we'll be putting them on and barracking. Okay, Damien, great call. Let's go to Vince. Vince, you've got Ollie Wines here for Pure Tap. Uh, yeah, g'day, Ollie. G'day, lads. How are you going? Good on you, Vince. Um, quick one. You could probably also maybe get some old paraphernalia from Ken as well to uh, help yeah. barrack for Gold Coast on Saturday. So yep. there you go. A um, c- couple of quick ones. Um I, uh, far be it from anyone to criticise our defence because I know points conceded we're right up there first or second in the league. But one thing that I've seen a lot of this year is conceding really, really late goals in quarters. I mean, not just last quarters, but yep. you look at the... I was at the game on, on Saturday. We conceded a goal in the last minute in the first and the second quarters. Yep. Um, we... Um, we conceded, uh, conceded a goal after we kicked the first two goals and then held Collingwood for about 15 minutes. We then conceded a goal, albeit to a 50-metre penalty, late in the third quarter as well. Um, obviously, the game against West Coast and Adelaide conceded late goals. Even the game against Fremantle, the first half, which was uh, you know, quite a struggle, uh, there was only one goal kicked in the second quarter and that was really late by Fremantle. So that's the first part of my question about strategy for stopping uh, late goals and giving the opposition momentum going into a break. Well, Vince, let him but answer that one. Let, let him, that and one, then, yeah. then we'll yeah. get you back. I think that, that, um, that's been a problem, uh, particularly over the last four weeks um, against Adelaide, West Coast and Collingwood, where we've given up goals in red time and whether that's we've got to uh, 
understand when it's say two or three minutes to go and just control the ball don't take any risks um, even if you're not going to score yourself uh, you're not going to let the opposition score so that's something we've noticed um, particularly on the weekend I, I know the ones you're talking about uh, on, on quarter time and second on the half time siren so um, it's definitely a problem at the moment and Mark too Vince yeah just quickly um, we, we've We've had a, a lot of goalless quarters this year, which is probably part of the reason why we haven't um, had the attacking prowess that we had last year uh, to back up our good defence. Um, is there is there a, a sort of an alert that goes out that maybe at the 10-minute mark or something, if if we're struggling to, to maybe look at maybe trying to just change the plan a bit to maybe chip around a bit more and try and... Um, eke out some way to get the ball inside 50 to um, to try and get a scoring opportunity to um, to at least try and break the momentum of, uh, momentum of another team when um, I mean a couple of times it worked out great against uh, Western Bulldogs we had a goalless quarter and one against Richmond we had a goalless quarter and one with one goal in the whole second half but still one um, uh, but bit of an issue, the amount of goalless quarters that I think we've had this year as well. Vince, Vince, you've swallowed a champion data dictionary. You are the best we've ever had. Vince, compl- thank you for your call. Yeah, agree, The whole Vince. time you're talking, Vince, Ollie's just nodding. Yep, yep, yep. So thank you, Vince. I don't know how we answer it, but because you asked a question and answered it, Vince, didn't he? Yeah, he did, he did. Do you, do you want to add anything to it? I've forgotten the question. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Let's go to North Haven, Steve. But, uh, yeah, thank you, you, Vince. I agree with Vince. No, what, what a great port man. Steve. Yep. Uh, how are you going, guys? Hello That's to Ollie. Uh, I've been to every game this year and uh, it's been a dis- disappointing year, but great to see you guys play. And uh, we, well, there are supporters out there that, that do love you and all that sort of thing, and there's a lot of baggers. But one question my wife wanted to ask was, uh, when you're in the centre bounce, we've got the best ruckman. Yeah. So all the opposition is always hanging on to you guys and staying really close. When, when uh, Paddy goes up, you know how... Paddy Dangerfield, they knock it out to him. He runs around the back of the pack yep. and then goes forward. Can we, is it, you know, can we have someone? I'm going to tell you how to suck eggs here. Can we have someone that runs around the outside? Paddy being the guy that can get it, taps it way out. We're already loose and kick it in. Yeah, definitely. We get so uh, frustrated. I get what you, you're you, saying. Steve. I guess there's a balance between running aggressive, uh, what we call a route, um, off Paddy. Uh, I guess the downside of that is if it doesn't happen to fall in his lap because um, he's generally on the move pretty quick, uh, the opposition will get it. So there is a, a balancing game there that you've got to understand that perhaps you've got to be off a body to, to win it so that um, your opposition don't. But, um, yeah, look, uh, it's probably more for Robbie Gray. That's sort of how he plays at centre bounce. Um, he's pretty elusive and he can get on the move. So um, generally, if you see Robbie in a centre bounce going hit two, that's what he'll be doing. Um, different players uh, vary their style up. So I, I won't do that as much. I'll sort of wrestle my opponent and back my strength to, to win the ball. Steve, tell your wife that was a great question. What about as a ruckman? You've had a bit of ruck experience this year. You've, how's the craft? <laughs> going? Uh, I'm not allowed to do centre bounce uh, <laughs> when I have rucked, but uh, look, I had to ruck against Dawson Simpson for about a half. <laughs> I remember that. Against GWS. 211 or something. Look, to be honest, I don't know how they do it. They're, they're pretty good athletes they to be able to do that for four quarters. Tough. I'll give them that. Callum, you've got um, you got Ollie here for Pura Tap. All yours. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so you've been touted as the, uh, you know, the next in line for captaincy. Um, your current leadership group, I think, has been been really good um but as far as you're concerned where do you see the next uh you know the the next lot of guys coming through to take up the uh the role in the leadership group sort of you know in the next uh two three years as the as the older boys sort of get along in their career is there anyone that's sort of sticking yeah. out to you that you reckon will be easily jumping in there for sure i think we've got a, a really good emerging young talent group particularly in our back line um i think of guys like dougal howard Darcy Byrne Jones, Dan Houston, these guys there, um, I guess they're encouraged um, from being young to, to speak uh, around the club. So they're not afraid to speak to Hoff or Bokey, a couple of the senior players. Um, we're encouraged to speak up when you're young. So I guess these guys uh, over the first few years of their footy career have developed the skills to be leaders. And um, I guess I can see these guys developing into to being that next generation of leaders. Great call there, Callum. Everyone was good. Uh, Ollie and Bix and I have given it to Vince. We just thought that champion data 
question and <laughs> yep. stat, and his passion shone through yes, for the Port Very Adelaide good. Footy Thanks Club. And, and Eddie smiled all the way. Uh, not Eddie, Ollie. We, we love passion, Bix. <laughs> mm, indeed. And just a quick one. Um, Matthew Nix has uh, been there probably your whole career almost as yep. an assistant coach. He's not going to be there. Has he got a few words on him? Has he been helpful for your career? Oh, he's been uh, he's been enormous in my career, and um, not just for me, but in general, the footy club. Mm. Um, probably after we lost Alan Richardson uh, to St Kilda, he sort of took that role of overseeing the, the coaching group and um, really mentoring them as well as the players. And, um, look, it's it's exciting for him, I guess, to, to see him going on to, to bigger and better things. And um, I'm not sure if he wants to be a senior coach one day, but uh, mm. if he does, I'm sure he'd make a good one. Any debutantes this week? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's only what what day is tomorrow? Wednesday main mm. training, so we'll see how we okay. go. But um, what sorry, you Billy, to... I've tried for six weeks. To get to <laughs> Poor little Billy Frampton. <laughs> I've talked him up for six weeks. I, oh, sorry, Billy. I Just on that, I did hear read. in the sort of dispatches that uh, Paddy Wright has pulled up all right, and he's most likely going to play. I think he has, and Excellent. look, we we think it uh, worked pretty well last week. He, he's, he's I don't think he's hundred percent to mm. be honest. No. So um, for him just to be doing his centre bounce work and he kicked three goals forward. He's, he's a good it forward. It was a credit to him last he's week. He's as good forward he, yep. as he is in the ruck. And yep. um, Paddy, uh, sorry, Westy did a, a good job against the, probably the All-Australian yeah. ruckman in Grundy, who's Indeed. a bit of a star. Well, double A, thanks you, Ollie. Brecky, I know you still got your commit with Pembo. And, well, I love hearing you with Brecky. Um, all the best for this Friday, and thanks for coming in. And um, when you're ready to fish, get out on a real mark. And, <laughs> well, yeah, actually, actually, the bro, I don't fish. want to expose him. Yeah. Mm. Dodge tide. You even know what a dodge tide was. <laughs> I know you're born up there on the Bloomin' River, but we have dodge tides here, yeah, blood worms. I don't know, yeah. Look, Come we're on, Ollie, look at Ollie. Yeah. Well, he's still, <laughs> he's you, still finding the ropes of he's the right. sort of maritime stuff. Well, he's here till 2022 and beyond. Exactly. He'll be You've got to start learning it, Ollie. I oh, know, for <laughs> sure. On. He's more in the, at home oh. in the air as a pilot as opposed to on the waves. Oh, how is yeah. that going? That's no, going all right, yeah. I haven't been, obviously, the weather's been keeping me on the ground for a bit, okay. but um, off-season, hopefully, get up, I'll take you up, Rowie. Oh, good to know about that. I'd rather take you fishing than you take me out. Uh, we'll split the difference there. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming in, Ollie, and thanks, uh, yeah, all the best for the last Cheers. round of the year.